we're actually restoring the garage. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that uh, I was working on an entrance door to the garage that the frame had rotted on. And I got about a quarter can of paint left. So I'm just using up this existing paint. If I don't, it's going to go bad. And this is one of the areas that kind of got slacked on when we built the garage, mainly because I was just in get it done mode and going back and cleaning up some of the nail holes and such and uh, putting a fresh coat of paint on it. So I've got that far one done. I'm working on this one. And then I've got one more to do if I've got enough paint. I also got the no joking painting hat on. This is a, a hat that's been with me for a long time. My dad gave it to me one time when I was over there helping him paint at his place. And I always wear it when I'm messing with house paint just to keep the paint out of my hair. But uh, there'd be no joking when you got the Myrtle Beach painting cap on. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is about door mirrors used on the 1970 to 81 Camaros. Some people call them uh, bullet mirrors. Some people call them sport mirrors. They should be pretty simple. There's a gasket, a bracket, two mounting bolts for the bracket and the gasket, the mirror itself, and a mounting screw. But there's a left and a right, and it's uh, quite confusing once you actually get into it. And I'm just going to go over a few things that I've learned along the way. So here's my box of parts here. These are the mirrors that come off of uh, the 72 and the 81 Camaro. You'll notice that uh, I've got them already taken apart with the exception of this uh, passenger mirror. And basically these come apart quite easy. You've got two screws in the bottom and once you take those two screws out this whole assembly will slide out of the mirror the mirror will separate from the top and the bottom here I did find this piece of mirror glass on eBay and was real happy about that come in this box here there's the part number and one thing that I was happy about is it was the exact measurement of what I've had. I've seen these in different sizes and not every single one of these are the same. Even though they say these mirrors was used on all different kind of GM cars, I'm finding that the Camaro ones are a little bit smaller than most of them. I've had a couple here in the garage that actually had the studs made into the base that come straight out, threaded studs. And those mirrors typically seem to be a little bit larger. So guys, I wasn't going to make this video, but in my quest to get some replacement parts in here, I found a lot of errors in the way parts were listed for sale. I was finding out that uh, basically they had a right-hand bracket listed as a left-hand bracket. And, you know, it's kind of scary because you really didn't know what you was ordering. And so... It was so many listings on eBay that I was finding that was wrong that I actually questioned myself. I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'm not thinking about this right. Maybe I need to go back and, and look at these on the car and make sure. And sure enough, I've got a set mounted on these uh, two doors that I happen to have in the garage. And we're going to show you that. And we're going to actually look at a reproduction set of these mirrors that I've had for quite some time. And I'm going to show you some of the differences between the GM stuff and the reproduction set if you want to go that route. So yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, let's start off by talking about the mirror gasket. So here's a left hand side gasket, one that I'm actually planning on using. And it's got this mounting tab that will actually go into a hole that's in the door skin. Not real sure what purpose that serves unless it just maybe a little extra strength as far as why you're getting all this mounted up but there's a there's a bracket that uh, will go on here and two screws and we'll get into that a little bit later but one thing I wanted to point out the part number on it ends in 126 there's a tall side 
and a thin side to this gasket. And what I have always found is the tall side goes toward the top of the door. Right here is the right hand side. I went ahead and labeled it with a marker. Again, you got the thick side, the thin side. I've labeled it that this is the top. It's also got this little mounting stud. And the part number, if you can see it, it actually ends in 127. Like I said, I'm not real sure what the purpose of this mounting tab is unless it was just like I said, maybe it gives it a little bit of extra strength and keeps it from being moved so easily. I'm not real sure. But this particular gasket would work, but it, it doesn't have it. Like I said, there's no part number or nothing. And you know, when you buy this stuff online, you don't really know which one of these you're going to receive. And I had bought these and probably won't use these here. I do have this set that we'll plan on using on the 81 Camaro and I've got another set just like them put up for uh, the 72. So now I want to talk to you about brackets. You have a left and a right bracket but I've also come across two different styles that were used between the early years and the later years. This style right here is actually one for the 72 and what I wanted to show you this is a driver side and I just wanted you to see the way the the end of it looked here. This is actually the part that's actually going to grab the mirror and pull it tight against this bracket. So this is the driver side of an early car and here's the driver side that came off of the 81 and you can see how it's got more of a point to it. Again, both driver side brackets. Something else that you always see on a driver side is this cutout. And what this cutout is actually for is so that the uh, remote cable has enough room to go past this bracket through the hole in the door and down to the door panel. So that's, uh, that's a driver side. Now the one way that I always remember it is when, like I said, on your gasket, thick side to the top, then your bracket is going to go on top of the gasket and then you've got two, two screws that's going to go down through, through this whole apparatus. But the way that I always remember it is this angle, if it's angled toward the door glass, that's the side that it goes on. So in this case, if this was, uh, like I said, top of the door, this is the driver side. Basically the hood would be in front of us. You can see how this bracket is angled toward the door glass. And that's how you would know that this is the driver side bracket. That's the way I'm keeping up with it. Because If we look at a passenger side, you can see they're angled opposite of each other. Now, I don't happen to have a passenger side bracket for an early car, so probably what I'm going to do is modify this later year to fit it just to uh, cut it down a little bit to where it looks like this one. But again, you've got, uh, you've got left and right. Now I got to looking at the uh, mirror bases. They're actually different. I think that's why the brackets are a little bit different. This is actually a mirror base for the driver side off of my 72. And you can see how this is cut out. Now it's notched out for the bracket. And that allows that to set down in there really nice. And it fits really good. And once you actually put the mounting screw through the hole there, how it's going to pull everything tight and it's going to sit flush. That's what you're after. 
and you're mounting these, you're after it sitting flush with the bracket and everything already installed. Now this is the driver's side off of the 81 and you can see it doesn't have that cutout. It's all just just straight across. That's something I never noticed before. I always thought they were the same. But you can see a little bit different in the early years versus the later years. And that may be why they changed the style of the bracket. Not real sure. But this one just it slips up in there a little bit tighter. And then uh, like I said, once it once the mounting screw goes through there, it's, it's gonna be flush. I find that the later years barely sticks up in the back just a little bit. But this is all GM stuff. But still yet once you once you put it flat against the table, you'll see how it's flush. On driver's side door skin, there's a bracket already built into the door skin. It's welded on, and these actually fit really tight. On the passenger side, I'm doing skins, so I'm, I'm actually cutting the bracket that was on the driver's side off of the old skin and installing it on the passenger side. However, there was another type of bracket GM used on the passenger side that got bolted to the inner structure or screwed to the inner structure and then you know the the bolts would go down through the door skin and go down through this bracket here and uh, this is the only one of these that I've had actually the only one that I've actually really seen most of these are gone and you'll see a little bit of everything on these cars from just sheet metal screws down through the skin to toggle bolts uh, like I said you'll see everything holding a passenger mirror onto a passenger door skin one other quick detail that I've noticed is actually on the mounting screw I actually have three of the original mounting screws and you can see how they've got that end on it here I think this is a number 10 by 24. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what that is. I went down to my local uh, hardware store and picked up a handful of them. The best that I could get as far as the closest match. And they do work. They work just fine, but something that I noticed between the ones I picked up at my hardware store and the originals the head of them is just a little bit different size if we take this original and we take the one off my 72 see how that fits in there really nice and you can see here the ones from the hardware store they fit and they look good but you can tell they're just a little bit bigger not really much of a difference however when we go to the 81 Camaro the originals fit in there really good and the one I picked up at the hardware store is actually too big the head of it you can see it does not fit in the uh, countersunk hole there like I said, I got three of the originals for these, so we'll use two of the originals on the 81. And then I'll use two of these that I picked up for the 72. And they'll look just fine in there. So just a small detail there. Okay, so I have one reproduction mirror mounted on my 81 Camaro door on the passenger side. And I have one driver side reproduction mirror mounted onto the 81's Camaro door that is actually on Project Overkill. So at first glance these mirrors look really good. They are a good mirror, but there is some differences. But right now let's just look how the mirror is mounted. 
like I mentioned, the thick side of the gasket to the top, and then the low side, or the, the thinner side there at the bottom, that gives the mirror the correct angle when it's on the door. And you can see how the back of the mirror is still within the gasket, and it's setting flush. This driver side is going to have your remote knob that is going to be mounted in the door panel. And something else, these mirrors come with their own hardware, the brackets and the screws. And the screws are actually smaller, they're number 8, and the bracket doesn't have the provision for the cable. So I actually had to cut out a notch out of the bracket so that I could get the cable through the door. They may have changed that by now, I don't know. I've had these mirrors for several years. I got them as a Christmas present one year from my wife. So there's the driver side and right here is the passenger side. Now on this passenger side I have modified it. I've countersucked the hole a little bit bigger to accept the number 10 screw and filed it down somewhat and you can see here it fits really good again we got our thicker side and then our thinner side and you can see how that uh, gives it the right angle the cool thing about these mirrors is you're going to get new glass so they're not going to be, you know, 30 years of scratches on the glass. Now that's a good looking mirror and if you hadn't been around these cars very much, you would think that's an original mirror. However, I noticed right away once it was on the car that it was slightly larger. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking up the difference, but you can definitely tell that this mirror is slightly larger than the original. Quite a bit of difference there. between the GM on the left and the reproduction there on the right. One thing about these reproduction mirrors, the internals of them will not coincide with the internals of the GM pieces. They're too big, they won't fit in the housing. So here is the driver's side remote mirror off of Fast Times. And you can see right here, the knob is pretty decent looking that controls the mirror. Some slight pitting, but I was able to uh, polish it up really good and it turned out really, really nice. The glass, on the other hand, will need to be replaced. The movement is still really good. It moves really nice. Now when I look at Project Overkills, it moves good. The glass is pitted. But this knob is terrible looking. But if you're not a member of NastyZ28.com and you're restoring one of these second gen F-Body Camaros, you need to be. Because I was on the uh, search archives the other night browsing through because I was trying to figure out how this thing came apart. And um, it's actually pretty cool. If you look down in there you would have no idea that that actually screws out and this one actually took quite a bit of force to get it to screw out but sure enough it screws out so actually you could actually send this off and um, have it replayed it I can't take credit for that because uh, I found it on the internet and I'm going to put a link in the description below of that particular thread on that form. And, uh, you know, just amazing resource there on uh, different parts of restoring these cars. Because I was ready to uh, pretty much scrap this piece all because of that. And when in reality, you know, this this can be fixed. So right now the plan is to restore an original set for Project Overkill 
and I'll do a video on that and then during all of that I'm going to be thinking about whether or not I'm going to use these for project fast times or actually restore two sets and um, I'll just make that decision on down the road but I had enough information here that um, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I had been going through while trying to get these mirrors on the car and some of the things that I had learned. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that little bell notification. That way you'll be notified each time we upload a video here. And guys, I'm gonna turn you loose cause I gotta get back to painting. I gotta finish this window up tonight and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.